Welcome to the Stitch TV. I'm Lynn and this is Pam. And we are so excited you guys joined us today. Yeah. We are starting a new TV talk show. Well, YouTube online quilting talk show. There you go. We <laughs> yeah, it's an online quilting talk show. We're going to chat about quilting, we're going to talk about things in the quilt world, and we're just going to chat about things that we're interested in. And we hope that you will join us. As well as interact with us, tell us things you want to talk about. We have lots of social media things for you to hook up with. And um, so right now our episodes are going to come out monthly. And then every other week from those, uh, we're going to do virtual sew-ins online. Uh, right. We're going to experiment with the format. We've tried Google Hangout. That seems to work pretty well. Uh, and I think we can also broadcast it on YouTube. If you can't join the Hangout, you could that watch the replay and see all the exciting things that happen. Um, and then I also uh, have a podcast called Hip to Be a Square. Uh, that comes out weekly, so you can have more of me, and occasionally Lynn will join me as a special guest wacky neighbor on there. <laughs> Is that what I am? I am the wacky neighbor? You're not that like, wacky. Uh, oh, okay. No, I think I'm the more sane of yeah. the two. Probably. Yes. I'm not sure, but... Mm. It, the it jury be, will be out. The jury will be out. Our husbands may have something completely different to say about it. <laughs> so anyway, yes. we want you to join us. We're online. We'll be on YouTube. We'll be Facebook. So join us at The Stitch. And let's just start talking about what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, today we're going to talk about quilt museums, both uh, formal and impromptu. We're going to talk about getting stains out of fabric. And we're also going to talk about what the heck we're doing here, beyond that lovely introduction that we just did. Right, yeah. exactly. All right, so museums. Museums. Yeah, so we have a quilt museum in Georgia. It's a local quilt museum called the Southeast Quilt and Textile Museum, and it's in Carrollton, Georgia. They just set up a new exhibit, I would say, about three or four weeks ago, and it's up for another couple months, and it is uh, quilts around Georgia. So they've asked all the different quilting groups in Georgia to donate quilts to the museum, they had a National Quilt Day in 2011. Yes. That the governor had a National Quilt Day, so their quilts hung in the state building, Capitol building. And so the, they're now housed at the museum. We actually went at, for the opening reception party, and it just got us thinking. I mean, we should have quilt museums and, and places to go see quilts because it's really it's part of our heritage and things we should keep up with. And I'm a, I'm a member of the... National Quilt Museum in oh, Paducah, fancy. which is an incredible, I mean, it's one of the best art museums you can go to. Yeah. And and not just for quilts. I mean, the fiber art in the museum is incredible. Yeah, so. and even beyond, like, okay, well, I could go see quilts at a show. The museum's different because it does a lot more around documenting history. It does more around um, preserving quilts, I think. Yeah, exactly, preserving quilts, which is interesting. I mean, when you think about it, we were so... We, we make so many quilts and we give them away and we're not necessarily keeping our stories. You know, we should do something about that on another show, about do how to document your quilt and save your story. Yeah. There's a whole organization called State Save Your Stories, and then there's the Quilt Index, and there's a lot of information about quilts out there, but people don't know, so... You know, we'll put some links out there for you to go check it out for history stuff. Yeah, now I did hear there, I, I've got two more quilting museum announcements. So we got Ooh. word this week that there's another one opening in Georgia. So we're local in the Atlanta area. Uh, there's one in Noonan that oh, is opening yeah. up. Um, I think it's a broader art museum, but they're bringing in a permanent quilt exhibit. Um, and then an online friend of mine in New Zealand has just opened up a studio slash museum herself but she's bringing in all kinds of local artists so pottery and fiber arts and she I think we these. should go to New Zealand I think we should we should take the stitch to New Zealand yes that will be a down the road <laughs> yeah in a few years uh, yeah <laughs> so um Charlotte's <laughs> museum is in Apua and apologies if I've mispronounced that uh but it is looks she on the North Island or the South Island when I look at it on the I map, knew that. it's on the east side, so like the northeast side-ish. Oh, so it's the North Island? Yes, but I don't know. I, well, I didn't zoom out far enough to see island-wise. I just knew it's on the east side of that part of the ocean. Is it close to Auckland? You don't know. I don't know. I'm an ugly American, <laughs> Lynn. I don't know. But I've been to New Zealand. Well, why don't you know? Because I, I didn't go to Apua. Clearly, now you have a reason to, though. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I just went to see The Hobbits, but 
they're not there really. No. You have to. You can see where they used to live in a hole in the ground, hmm. on a sheep's farm. <laughs> I kid you not. So you go and you tour this sheep's farm in New Zealand, and <laughs> Peter Jackson, when he filmed the show, if he filmed it on this farm, but of course they didn't have the right sheep, so he brought in sheep from New Zealand to film, or from England to film okay. on this New Zealand sheep's farm. Do they have? Which is funny. Imported? Did they send the so sheep they back? imported English sheep for New Zealand? But did they send them back? Or are they? Still I guess there? they did. But it's funny because New Zealand's like major, you know, export national product is sheep products. Huh. So there you go. Well, it's wool you. and lanolin and all that stuff. Which would explain why there's so much yummy yarn oh, that I see gosh. pictures of. I'm telling you, the yarn in New Zealand is incredible. It's yeah. gorgeous. I actually have some. Yeah. I didn't have enough money to buy as much as I wanted, but <laughs> you know how that is. You never have as no, enough fabric or yarn, right? Exactly. Yes. Well, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Okay. But, so semi-related. So there's formal and then kind of more informal just ex- right. yeah, exhibits. Uh, but even walking through the Atlanta airport, <gasps> if you go through yeah. the T-Con course, there's a random quilt exhibit of G's Bend quilts that see a little quilt fun as you walk through yes so you never know where they're going to pop up yes well well you know (laughs) okay Pam didn't know this but in the movie that the national wait no night at the museum night at the museum the one that they did in England the third one the third one there's geese bin quilts in it like I'm punching my sister during the movie going look at the quilts and she was like what you know even though she knows me so it's weird Ah, quilt muggles what do you do I know what can you do even when they're related I don't know what Oh, my gosh, she's going to watch this. I'll be in trouble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but let's move on because we need to talk about stains on fabric. So you were going to talk about stain, how to get stains out of fabric. Yes. I made a quilt a couple months ago and uh, didn't pre-wash the fabric because I just <gasps> normally don't. She didn't pre-wash. Oh, please. Oh, I know. I, I don't, you don't either. I don't pre-wash. Yeah. Mm, one thing we agree on. Yeah, <laughs> one of the few things we agree on. I will say, though, with batiks, normally I do, but I didn't have a lot of batiks in this quilt. But I had, uh, the colorway was red, black, taupe, and then off-white for the background. And one of the red fabrics that I used after red I is, washed Red's it, the worst. Red, red is, is the, the worst. worst. Um, and I like to wash quilts before I give them to people. So they aren't surprised when they think, you gave me this beautiful quilt. And then they wash it later on, and they're like, I ruined it. It looks different. Because the batting, if you have cotton batting, it'll crinkle up. Yeah, but I I just I like a I like to give them like all flat and smooth, and then just tell them it'll crinkle up when you wash it. Yeah, I I don't like the nasty surprise. <laughs> I don't want to call like I think I broke your quilt. And then you just give them a <laughs> color catcher, and here's some color catchers. Oh, honey, I used six color catchers in the first wash. They all came out pink, and they were still bleeding. Oh my gosh! Color catchers did not save the day. That was a little ridiculous. So I washed it maybe three more times with more color catchers, and they still caught dye, but it didn't remove the bleeding of the red fabric onto the cream. Okay. And I thought, oh, no. Panic. Panic. Because you don't want that ever to happen. Because, I mean, once that stuff bleeds on your fabric, uh, there, there's a lot of, you can't come back from that sometimes. Uh, but wait. But wait, there's sometimes more? Sometimes you can. Okay. <laughs> so to the Google. I to went the to Google. the Google. I went to the, the Google magazines. Google is awesome. Uh, and both agreed that Blue Dawn, not Purple Dawn, not Lemon Scented Dawn, Blue Dawn, the kind they use to clean baby ducks after oil spills. <laughs> baby ducks and your precious quilts. <laughs> Blue Dawn. Okay, go ahead. Blue Dawn. Okay. Blue Dawn. Don't put it in your washing machine. <laughs> <gasps> did, did, you, did you have no. light bubbles? Oh, we'll, get oh. we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, so the suggestion I got was soak in the tub, right? As hot a water as you can get, um, and then refresh the hot water every two to three hours for a total of twelve hours. And I thought I ain't got that kind of time. And this quilt is a gift for a teacher right. at the end of the school year, and the last day is coming up. Uh, so I soaked for one three hour period, and it was amazing. I could see like the water turned pink from the dye being released from the fabric. So it was oh, about good. a quarter cup of blue dawn in a so bathtub it was all full of hot water. Pink? Did it turn the whole quilt it, it, pink? No, no. It did, the p- quilt was already pink, so oh, well. it was only going to go up from there. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's equal, it's kind of like a tea dye. Yeah. So, but then, so my big bathtub's upstairs. My washing machine and dryer are one level below. So then I had like the giant clothes basket with a towel in it because I didn't want the quilt dripping all through the house. <laughs> Piled the wet quilt in there, chugged it on down. 
uh, and thought, well, I'm going to just put a little more blue down the washing machine. I'm sure that'll end well. <laughs> and I have a front load. Oh, no. That's just like. No, but so the benefit I mean, of the front that's load, like a movie. Like it, it's, it's exactly like what happened to my dad. When I so was this is hereditary. Seven, yes, when I was seven, he so it's used genetic. dishwashing <laughs> liquid in the dishwasher. And my mother and my sister and I came home and were like, what happened in here? And he's like, I did the dishes. We're like, eh, thanks. There's <laughs> foam coming out <laughs> down on the floor. <laughs> so I've channeled my father in more ways than one. Uh, so, yes. Now, the benefit of a front load, though, is that the door seals. So the suds could not get out. Now, the machine stopped and said, hang on a minute. There's some suds in here and gave me the big old suds error. <laughs> so about 11. Wait, so the machine actually is prepared yes. for this mistake. It'll say suds. <laughs> and it's go. like, well, no duh. I have a There's top some loader. Suds. Top yeah, load, you will come I'm out like... the side like in overboard yeah. Yeah. when Goldie Hawn tries to do laundry. And... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a top loader because I don't, those front loaders, they're I heard good. bad stories about them for a while. Nah. So, But they're good now. We can talk about that later. Okay, but go ahead. So. Sudsarama. 11, suds 11 rinse only cycles later. Still suds, some suds. Suds 2013. And then. 2015. But I will say in all of this rinsing, like the quilt's looking pretty good. Like all the red dye is now out. Now oh, I just whoa. have to get rid of the suds. <laughs> but you saved the quilt. So that's what's most important. The quilt Except was now saved. I can't get the quilt to be unsudsy. Oh. Which is my next hurdle. But then I remembered, oh, we have recently rented carpet steam cleaning machine from our grocery store. Right. And there's a product that you put in the uh, shampoo reservoir, anti-foam. <gasps> Amazing. So they I have thought, stuff for everything. Well, that was good. You thought I had. remembered that we had that and that it was conveniently in the cabinet right behind the laundry room in the bathroom. So I went and pulled that and squirted. So we had a little technical difficulty, but we're, we're back now. <laughs> so you were talking about how... Moral of the story. Moral of the quilt Blue Dawn story. Blue Dawn. Will remove dye bleed over on your quilt. Okay. This is good information, really. Use it in a bathtub preferred method with a soak. Uh, alternately, if you have Rug Doctor anti-foam stuff. Important to have. It comes in a bottle about yay big. Squirt some of that in there. In your washing machine with the Blue Dawn, don't do more than like an eighth of a cup of Blue Dawn in your washing machine because it, I mean, it'll be a suds a party. Suds party quickly. Invite your friends. <laughs> now, okay, so that's a sta that's a definitely bleeding on fabric. That's definitely a problem. I'm a long arm quilter, and I have had oil drop on a quilt oh, yeah. from the machine, um, which is not good. But what helps is. Uh, Baking soda, like have baking soda close to you, and like put it on the put it on the oil as soon as possible to draw that oil out, and then that will help. So, do you vacuum it off, or do you flick it off, or what do you do to get the baking soda I, off? I I flicked it off and then <laughs> took a vacuum. <laughs> took the, you know, you have those vacuum attachments to yeah. your machine, your big industrial vacuum. Regular, it's like the mini vacuum tool. Yeah, set. the little mini vacuum tool set that helps. Um, but I was lucky because. Uh, it's a hand-dyed fabric, so you can't really tell. Oh, <laughs> lovely. I love a tone-on-tone. Tone. A tone-on-tone, hand-dyed batik. You really can't tell those things. It's only when you have, like, the prints that it can be really... Yeah, the commercial prints. Or solids. Solids, it'll show Ooh, up every time. Yes. Yeah. So, but I was lucky it was a hand-dyed, so... And then you just quilt over it <laughs> and go, look, that was a design choice. It is a design. There's no mistakes. There's no mistakes. There's it's design all design choice. choice. So that, uh, that's been my major one lately. Yeah, cool. But I don't pre-wash, so I know yeah. it's always like you're rolling the dice. You're risking yeah. by not pre-washing. So, but you can't pre-wash. You can't pre-wash um, uh, pre-cuts. So. Oh, not at all. No, oh, do not pre-wash. Holy moly! <laughs> pre-cuts. One time. All it takes is one time. Like I'm gonna pre-wash this jelly roll. Oh my goodness. Yes. Do not. <laughs> that, that's you a will bad get day. A wad. That's a bad day. It's a bad day. <laughs> it's a bad day. <laughs> a bad day. But what you can do with pre-cuts to reduce the lint, and this is a Kimberly Einmo tip, is you get a lint roller, and you lint roll it while it's still packaged up. While you're in the jelly roll? While it's still in a jelly roll, or even like a fat quarter or a honey bun or any of that. And just lint roll the edges to get, so you don't get the pre-cut lung uh, uh, with all the... Uh, <laughs> 
stuff that you inhale. <laughs> you can tell when you've used a briquette, like your entire shirt is like covered with this little fuzzy. The cats, the pants, everything is covered. Yes, it's like breeds. I don't know what it, it is. is. A mess. And some are worse than others. I think it just depends on the pinking shear that they use. Yes, to some cut precuts come with like a deeper pink. Yes. And those don't lint up as much. Right. So. Yes. But if they come with a deeper pink, I. But then you feel like, I'm not getting as much fabric. Well, and when you're sewing that quarter inch Ooh, tri- yeah. triangle, it's it's um, just, it's hard yeah, to. Yeah, because you feel like it's getting, it's now an eighth of an inch between the bottom of the pink and close to your seam allowance. And then you're like, yes. oh, it's going to wrap. And I've had, some, I've had some seams pop because of that. Oh, yeah, I've had that too. Mm. And then what you do is you just cut out a little fleece heart and you applique it over it. And you just put a little extra love in that quilt. Fleece hearts on my But that quilts. also covers up stains, too. But um, that's good for baby quilts, because babies like tactile things. Yeah, but if it's an art quilt on the wall, you're just stuck. Yeah. Then you got a but problem. Fleece... But I, I do less art quilts. I do more, like, functional, I'm going to make a quilt fort yeah, kind of Yeah, I like quilts that hang on the wall. That's what I do. I like to make mine into forts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to get behind here in a minute and pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Salukis aren't into that. Uh, Salukis are my dogs, so I should probably yes. explain that really quick. All right, so let's talk about us. That's our segue into talking about us. Because we haven't already talked about At all, us. at all, <laughs> at all. So we became friends about five years ago. We both joined the Atlanta Modern Quilt Guild. Well, she was already in it, and I joined. Um, and we just started hanging out and going to sew-ins together and figured out we were like... Compatible. Well, five <laughs> miles from each other. We're complete opposites, which is what's really interesting. So we decided we'd, ta- we'd get together and um, do some projects together, which we've had and been very successful. And we we're like, hey, let's do a... Let's do a thing. Uh, let's do a thing. We didn't know what that was for a long time. So this is our thing. Um, this, this, this is one of the things. One of the things. We've got lots of things kind of in the, in the irons in the fire. There's a spreadsheet. But... but <laughs> So what we thought was really cool is my great-grandmother was a quilter, and her name was Marietta, and everybody called her Et, and um, I have one quilt that she made. She was the daughter of a Civil War um, officer who actually was injured in the city of Marietta, Georgia, and he loved the name of the city so much, which we live close to Marietta. We don't live in Marietta. He loved the name of the city so much that he named his daughter Marietta. Now, no one called her Marietta, which is actually a pretty name, but no one called her Marietta, and everybody called her Et. So my great-grandmother Et is the quilter in my family um, that I have a quilt from. And my mother didn't quilt, and I'm not sure my grandmother did. She was a florist, so she played with flowers. Yeah, so actually both of my grandmothers made quilts. Okay. Um, in particular, my grandma Eddie, which is short for Edna, um, did a lot with our old clothes. So I was born in the 70s. So we, we have some serious rockin' <laughs> quilts from the 70s. With corduroy. Corduroy, double knit. <laughs> double knit. All kinds of craziness in there. I have a, I have a quilt from the 70s atop with um, bionic woman oh. fabric. <laughs> hey. Oh. I can hear. <laughs> If you're a seventies child, you get that. <laughs> so Binding Man could see, but she oh, could hear. Oh, see. Yeah. Too bad. <laughs> I'm just saying. What do you do? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so when when we were thinking about what do we want to call this thing that we're doing, we came up with a company name that draws on our heritage. Because part of what we like doing is interpreting older patterns and making them modern. Right. And there's a couple ways to describe that. It's um Modern traditionalism. What it? What's the other like vintage, vintage modern. modern? That's a book actually yes. that we didn't write. <laughs> no, we didn't write that one. No. We should have written that oh, one. Oh well, it was a good book. It's a great oh, yeah. book. I have it. It's a great book. Yeah. So when we looked at what do we call this thing, we thought, well, Ed, Ed and Eddie sounds good together. Yeah. So we're Ed and Eddie, although we're really Lynn and Bam, but. <laughs> That's our company name. But it's really drawing. I think every quilter really has a heritage. So it's just us drawing from our heritage of quilters. Mm -hmm. My other grandmother was a quilter, too, but I don't know very much about her. My father passed before I really got a lot of information. Yeah, four names is a lot to put in one company name, though. True, true. 
true. So, anyway, so what we want to do is we are going to have this, you know, show that we're going to sit and talk. We're going to have chal- oh, challenges. Challenges. Woo! Okay, so uh, last month, Pam and I decided that we would uh, challenge each other with surprises. And um, so we thought we would reveal the challenge, and I will will put in the show notes what we started out with. Yes. So you're just going to see the end result. So I gave, <laughs> I think I was mean. So I have been doing long uh, Lone Star quilts for a while because I got addicted to them, a.k.a. one of them. And I had all these scraps from it, and I know she's a scrap quilter, and I'm not really totally a scrap quilter. So I gave her... A bunch of my scraps from the, yeah yeah from the you didn't use them all no I what? did not use them all oh my goodness <laughs> so I gave her a bunch of these scraps and said you have to make something and they were and but I did take them and made them into hourglass little squares so I did do some prep work you did which I appreciated yes so what did we what did you make the big reveal the big reveal. A piece of fat quarter. That's what she made. Oh, fat... <gasps> Ooh, I love it. That is awesome. Oh my gosh. Hold it up. Yes, so a little fun, 12 by 12. We can hang it in the background at some point. Yes. And, and I thought, honestly, we have enough of these left over. Because <laughs> I made a lot. We can make a little coasters. We could. That would we be good. Fat quarter hour. I don't know where we want to stick this. Do we leave it here in the middle? Let's. Let's set it back off to the side. So, unbeknownst to me that Lynn was going to hand me this pile of hourglass blocks, I was just looking around the sewing room at my little buffalo bits. That's what I call it when I have little trimmings left over that are still usable. Because, as in the olden days when they used every bit of the buffalo, little buffalo bits. Uh, And I found one hourglass block. But I thought, I'll give this to Lynn. (laughs) And sometimes we share the same brain. Yeah, so we both, unbeknownst to each other, exchanged hourglass blocks. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Anyway. But I only gave her one. She, yeah, I got one. <laughs> Look at what all she had to work with. I got one. I'm just saying. Can I point out none of these are the same size? Oh, that's because they were scraps. <laughs> so this is what I made. Da, da, da. It's a pin cushion. Ooh, it's disappearing. Because it started as an hourglass. Yes, it started as an hourglass. I put pins in there so you'd know what so it was. I, so I'm like, hey, thanks yeah. for the beanbag. Hey, thanks for the thanks for the tic-tac-toe beanbag. Oh, fancy. So, and I put a button on it and yeah, everything. I love it. So, but well, my tip with pin cushions are I like weighty pin cushions. Mm-hmm. So I always put sand in mine. And I put in uh, uh, walnut shells. Oh, yeah. Which you can get. And my favorite thing to put in um, pin cushions is lavender. Oh, the scent. Yeah, so it has this little nice smell to it. So, but pin cushions, mm-hmm. the sand's really good to help keep your pins sharp, mm-hmm. and um, the walnut shells. And I like them a little weighty. I want my pin cushions to not go flying off the table with a bunch of pins yeah. in them. Cool. So I like a little weight. So we have a pin cushion, and what I did is I I did a disappearing hourglass, and then I think I cut it up even again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Well, that did work. Uh, you know, I cut it into... So you take an hourglass, a disappearing thing, is you take a block and you cut it up into either four or nine sections. And I cut this up into nine. Then I rearranged that, sewed it back together, and then I actually trimmed off the edges and oh, and switched them. the sides oh. again, too, to give me another cool. a secondary pattern. So Sweet. So, But it made really little seams. So I went from a... I don't know, was it a six-inch block? Uh, not even that big, like four Five, and a half inch. Four and a half. Yeah, too pretty small because I had to put edgings on it. So, Lynn, if, say, maybe you happened to have to unsew something, not a mistake, but a design choice that you weren't sure you wanted to commit to. Oh, like you're saying, I never make <laughs> mistakes. No, I never. Sew, I so like, make mistakes. So, what do I do is I get out my handy-dandy seam ripper. And these are fancy seam rippers. They are fancy seam rippers. And I, they're some of my favorite seam rippers. And they're also the sponsor of our show, which is Barney Pens. So these are hand-turned seam rippers. They have a really nice weight to they them, do. which are awesome. And you can get them uh, where they're double-sided like this. Mm-hmm. Or you can also get them where they're on a necklace with a magnet. Yeah, it just pulls out. 
Love and it's, it. Love it. These are awesome. So, Barring Pins, thank you very much for being our first sponsor. We are so excited to have you. And we're going to put the link down for everybody to see where they can get their own one. And orange is my favorite color, so I, of course, got orange. Yours is I, blue. I have teal and purple because I couldn't commit to a favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> so... But they come in all kinds of colors. They're really awesome. Yeah. And there's other things that Barney does with pins and um, uh, bracelet helpers. Oh, yeah. bracelet, kind of thing. Um, wine corks. Wine corks. They're really nice. Sometimes so they're great gifts. And you should go check them out, especially for all your sewing friends. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is not just for quilters. Yeah. Anybody who sews, they need a seam ripper. Yeah. Because isn't it if you sew, sew, you, sew you must rip, reap. As you sow, so shall ye rip. 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 There okay, you go. Got that, it. That's so, it. But you can learn more about them at barneypins.com. Barneypins.com. It's awesome. Awesome. So, Lynn, we have our first piece of fan mail. We got fan <laughs> We haven't even had a show yet, and we have fan mail. And this is real mail that came in the mail to us. And we will put a close-up of the postcard. Yes, we will put a close-up of the postcard. But one of our quilting friends sent this to us from Mount Rushmore. Yes. So, and um, it's Kay Harper. She sent it to us from Mount Rushmore. And she thought we'd appreciate the humor. So this is the reverse side of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. That's hilarious. Yeah, we... It says, near as I can tell, we're somewhere behind Mount Rushmore. And it's four butts. <laughs> Because y'all butts are funny. Butts are funny. They really are. I have young children. Absolutely butts are funny. <laughs> so. Alrighty. Oh, my gosh. Pam, I can't believe we've, like, almost spent 30 minutes. I know. This is crazy. Amazing. So, amazing. So. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope you like it. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. Um, subscribe to our Instagram accounts. You can find us on all those social media places at The Stitch TV Show. Mm -hmm. So YouTube, Google+, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Lots of places. Right. Uh, and we'll have all those links on our website, which is www.thestitchtvshow.com. Uh, you can email us with questions at info right. at thestitchtvshow.com. Um, and really, uh, as we mentioned at the beginning... One of the things we're doing are monthly virtual sew-ins as well. So our next one is going to be Friday, September 11th. That's going to be 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. I know that's middle of the night for Europe. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll work on maybe alternating some times and hit some different time zones. Right. Yeah. Um, but you'll and that see... was fun last night. Oh, yeah. We did. We did a trial one sneakily last night. Yes. Uh, it was exciting. good. Yeah. But we've teased the people who were on it. We're like, we're up to something, but we can't tell you. We're doing a thing. Thanks. So um, you'll see links for all those things right. and calendar reminders on our website. Um, so really, uh, to close, we just want to give special thanks to our partner, Big Think Productions, for their support. And y'all tune in next month for more Quilting Chat with Friends. Right. Thanks. Bye.